a lead to grow uh, presentation on let's boost our students leadership skills. Um, Dr. Dina is the chair at the Department of Linguistics and Translation at Prince Sultan University. Um, she is the leader of the Applied Linguistics Research Lab at the College of Humanities and Sciences. And she's an associate professor of linguistics with several publications in flagship journals in the area of psycholinguistics, pragmatics, discourse analysis, analysis and second language learning and teaching. I love this, um, psycholinguistics, pragmatics. Difficult subject, but I love it. It was one of my favourites. Um, and she's also the winner of two Teaching Excellence Awards at the Prince Sultan University. So thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Dina. We're really excited to, to see what you have with for us. Actually, thank you very much. I'd like to start with thanking Notting Hill for organizing this um, amazing event. Uh, I would also like to thank you for having me today. And I hope that we um, have a good session. Uh, we just uh, go on uh, helping each other grow and uh, learn from each other's experience today. Um, uh, actually, uh, I'm here to go with the uh, motto that the uh, organizers chose for the session, for the event, lead to grow. And uh, I'm, I'm for boosting our students' leadership skills. Uh, I do teach at university, but I also had my experience, my share of uh, teaching at schools. And I think um, maybe some people would say, oh, I mean, are we really going to talk about leadership skills with school kids? And I would say, yes. Um, from my experience, um, leadership skills is something to be trained on and to be tried to acquire um, from a very young age. Um, uh, and um, I do believe that um, students uh, really need so many skills to learn in life, much more than the curriculum. I like a lot when Mike said, we teach kids, we don't teach the curriculum. I love that because yes, I mean, we do teach people who would like to grow, to develop, to have better work opportunities, to have better lives, to deal with people in a better way, to enjoy excellent people management. We want to contribute to people's lives uh, rather than just teach you know, the grammar or the vocabulary or the writing lessons that we have. We do want to teach that as well, of course, <laughs> but we don't want this to make us forget the bigger picture and the human being that we are trying to help grow. So with that said, let's just go to the topic right away. And let me start with some reflection, if you don't mind. And I would like to ask you, just trying to hope this works, just a minute, please. I have to make it go down. Yes, okay. I will try just to look at the chat and you just say, who do you consider a leader in your life and why? Who, which person you would just look to and say, this is a leader and why? Let's just, I'll, I'll be following up with the chat and sharing with everyone. Is it your manager at work? Is it a leader who inspired? Can you can you remember my doctor in the diploma? And why do you consider your doctor in the diploma to be a leader? What is so special about him or her? A leader is someone who leads the team. Okay. Do all people who lead teams um, are admirable leaders? I like I like this one. My mother because she has so many responsibilities and helps a lot in fields of life. Uh, so it's responsibilities, but also helping and supporting. I like that. Uh, your manager, you consider your manager a leader? Great. So many people consider the manager only a boss, <laughs> not a leader in any way. So I'm happy that you have a leader in charge. <laughs> um, a leader is a person who motivates you. I like that. A leader is someone who knows the way, shows the way goes the way oh this is amazing this is an amazing quote thank you very much um knows the way that's something shows the way that's something else and goes the way that's that's a very good one as well they encourage motivate influence and inspire others to grow and i think this goes very well with the theme of our uh, symposium uh, lead to grow uh, someone who can guide you, but not push you. I love the distinction. Shows you the steps and inspires you to take them. Yes, 
my mom again. Yes, I mean, I think mothers um, play leading roles in our lives. Uh, someone who helps everyone else. I love this idea of serving others. Uh, problem solver and good thinking and charismatic. Okay. Um, a leader is someone who has a vision and influence others to achieve. Well, I mean, that's a good one. If you don't have a vision, then where are you heading? Where are you taking your team, right? This is an important one as well. My principal, you're very lucky that your principal is a leader. Um, for me, a leader is a person who helps others better version of themselves. Dad, he gave me the vision to see myself and my life. Excellent. Uh, a principal because he was guiding us not giving orders and this goes back again to Mike's even when he was saying even to students do this don't do that we also human um, adults don't like this right um we like to be guided but not to be given orders all the time nobody likes that um supports and motivates setting rules and roles um my amazing leader Nad Hello, Nad, if he's here, uh, who believes in her team. Oh, she, I'm sorry, who believes in her team and delegates power and knows who can elevate the department. That's that's an amazing thing. If you really know how to elevate a department, that's that's an easy, that's not an easy task at all. Um, Hoda, because she's the first uh, Arabian to be a leading makeup company. Hoda Beauty. Okay, that's. Well, also being a pioneer is something. I, I hope we can have time to go on through all this. Very nice comments, positive and fair, a very important combination, thank you. Positive and fair. Who leads us in ways that makes you shy for yourself to make a mistake. Yes, it's uh, you don't want to make the mistake. Uh, uh, amazing comments. I wish we had time to go through all of them. Actually, I can, I was, what I was planning to do is to ask you, who is a leader so that you visualize a particular person in mind? And then I was going to go through, so what is leadership? But I think you have already moved to the second question. So I can read a few more comments. For me, a leader is a person who helps others to be better versions of themselves, always involved in the whole situation as part of it, not show the situation with passion. Uh, Previous headmistress, Miss Mona Akkad, I hope she wants here, she's here. She's an amazing person who leads us in a way that makes us shy of ourselves to make mistakes. My brother, okay. He always encourages me to do my best with my career. Excellent. My Arabic teacher in secondary school. Yes, don't we always sometimes look at some teachers and remember that person was different. It was an ideal teacher. I'm always trying to be effective like him. Yes, I mean, the emotional part is part of leadership. We should not forget that. Thank you for bringing this up. Um, my best friend, he always shows me the way and gives me the freedom to decide. Who likes imposition? Nobody, right? We're, we're, we're human beings, even if you are at a very young age and you want people to give you guidelines, but you want people to give you freedom to choose. Thank you so much. <laughs> I think I've, I've, I've learned everything I'm coming here to say. <laughs> Thank you so much, great contribution. Uh, let me go on and you will have more chances to uh, listen to everybody's voices. Let me start here, if you allow me, with um, uh, some uh, a couple of paragraphs by Jacob Morgan, who is uh, somebody who writes books about uh, a book writer about leadership. And I wanted to start with this because he was also trying to ask CEOs, what is leadership and who is a leader? The very two same questions that you were very, uh, um, uh, you were great at answering. And let's see what he found. Jacob says, as part of the research for my new book, The Future Leader, I interviewed more than 140 CEOs around the world and asked them each to define leadership. Many people struggled or had to pause. Remember, these are CEOs. To think, because it's a word we use so frequently without really defining. We take the concept of leadership for granted and assume that we all know what leadership is and what a great leader looks like. For more than 140 people, I didn't receive a single duplicate response. And this is, this is true. I mean, we just think, oh, leadership skills. And what is a leader? Who is a leader? What makes a leader a leader? I mean, we don't often reflect on that. And I think maybe we do need this reflection time. 
Some CEOs define leadership as having business acumen, like setting a vision or achieving goals for a company. Other people focus on human qualities like empathy, humility, or diversity. Every answer was different, but they were each correct. Each leader has their own personal definition of leadership. Um, and, and this is true. I mean, this is something that we also have to accept that every leader has their own way of leading and their own understanding of leadership. And this influences how they lead and the cultural direction of the company or the school or the institution that they're leading. The definition of leadership can also change as the leaders themselves change. With new leaders come new approaches to leadership. And probably this is why rotation is desirable in leadership positions because you may wish to see different versions of leadership and institutions and departments and organizations may need to learn or may need some leadership characteristics at some point, but may need other characteristics at another point in order to be sustainability, to, to achieve sustainability. So with new leaders come new approaches to leadership, which impacts overall cultures and employees. When he talked about who is a leader, he said there are countless people through history that led people, but were inhumane and destructive. Does that make them leaders? And he said, in my mind, a leader is someone who does more than just lead people. They have to be driven by the right motivation and make a positive impact on the people around them. And I love that. I love that. It's not anybody, you always say, you know, the difference between a boss and a leader. We always talk about that, or a manager and a leader. And um, not the fact that you are leading a team, that you have to be a leader. Sometimes you're simply not because you forget the right motivation. And always we talk about impact driven culture that we are living in. We're always thinking of what is the impact that this does in our life. If you're doing research, now everybody talks about what is the impact of your research on society, on the world. If you are teaching, always talk about what is the impact of that on um, the society. I mean, if we're spending billions of dollars on education and then the society is not improving, so what's the point? So I think also with leadership, we need to think of that. If you are in a leading position, you need to think of what is the impact uh, your leadership has created. Uh, on your department, on people's lives, on um, students, if you're in a school. So impact here is very important. It's what, have, what has this leadership led to? And here, I like this part of Jacob's definition of who is a leader. When he said a leader is someone who can see how things can be improved and who rallies people to move toward that better vision. So you have a vision, and you know how to somehow persuade people to go along with you for that vision. Leaders can work toward that vision, uh, that version of uh, to making that vision a reality while putting people first. So it's not that you are going for that vision and then you give people a hard time and you push everybody and you make everybody hate the day that they are coming to work. <laughs> it's like, you have to keep the vision, but at the same time, you need to balance that out, that people come first. If you lose people, there is no vision and there is no new reality. Just being able to motivate people isn't enough. We're not cheerleaders. We need to be empathetic, connect with people to be successful. Leaders don't have to come from the same background or follow the same path. Future leaders will actually be more diverse, which brings a variety of perspectives. Of course, other people can disagree with this definition, but the most important thing is that organizations are united internally with their definition of leadership. And I like this sentence when, do we really have a definition of leadership in our schools? Do we really have a definition of leadership in our organization, institution? This is a very important concept because leadership is affected by our perspectives, our ideologies, our culture. And maybe it will be very helpful if we just sit together and reflect since we are students, school, uh, teachers and our role here or in this session is to try to 
boost our students' leadership skills, perhaps it would be a very nice discussion if we just sit together and instead of saying, yes, I'm boosting my students' leadership skills, to sit together and say, what is it exactly that I will try to train my students on? What is my definition of leadership? What are the things that I will give a priority for when I'm training my students on leadership? I think this definition is, is missing in some um, organizations and some schools. And I, I do believe this is a very important exercise that we need to, to do. And so this is why I will come to this question. What are the characteristics of a leader? Because if we all come to uh, an agreement, what characteristics we want to teach our students, to make our students acquire, then maybe we can come up with how we can do that. So if you could just please go to www.menti.com and use the code 66 three zero four nine zero nine and we try together to see the characteristics you would put for uh, a leader let me stop sharing here because i will have to share a uh, mentimeter i guess um, no i have to share screen first i'm sorry Okay, and let's let's start. If you could just uh, write three uh, characteristics of a leader that we can all agree on, and let's see which ones will be um, the most uh, recurrent. The number is there up. If you haven't seen it, you go to www.menti.com, and then the number is six six three zero four nine zero nine. Um, is it possible, I can see that some are writing in the chat box. Uh, is it poss possible, please, that you, um, yes, okay, more are coming now, that you just use the code and go to www.menti.com. Yes, okay, let's see. I love your contribution. Uh, very smart, very, very um, real in our life. Yes. Amazing, amazing. How it keeps changing like that, but. Um, thank you so much. I mean, I'll, I'll just have to uh, comment on here a bit. Uh, amazing. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I, I think you can see the ones that are very much repeated by many people, and they are not about um, making more income for the company. They are not about um, uh, making a new strategic plan. We are not about meeting our KPIs. I mean, all these are important, of course. I'm not saying they are not. But look at what matters to people. Passionate, inspiring, empathetic, positive, wise, encouraging, empathy, motivating, energetic, supportive, 
helpful, right? I mean, look at this, look at how much emotion is at the heart of it. How much you touch people, how much you affect their lives, how much you know how to manage people and get to them and, and, and convey your message and be there for them. Uh, how much you manage to support them and lead to grow, as, as we're saying, is very much at the heart of leadership. Perhaps you could take a picture of that, I think, and send it to all participants, because it's really sometimes we forget about these things. We forget, we just remember leadership is this person who's making the strategic plan for the department, who is uh, getting all the evidence to prove that we're getting there. And, and this is part of the job, but this is not what people really want to see. And this is not what makes you a leader or makes us leaders if we want to. It's how much you connect and how much you manage to get people to where we want to be together while really enjoying the whole experience. So yes, thank you very much. Uh, I do agree, uh, being passionate about something makes others passionate as well. Um, trying to support others will make people support the department or the place or the school that you are in. Uh, encouraging people will lead to more production. Um, having empathy to what we are all experiencing at the end of the day, we're human beings, we're not machines. Uh, being a problem solver is extremely needed because definitely you meet so many problems along the way and problems are actually sometimes what create leaders. Sometimes leaders become leaders because there was a problem that they managed to uh, find the way out for. Um, being positive, thank you. I cannot imagine really a leader who's always thinking of the negative side of everything. I mean, how can you be a leader there, <laughs> right? I mean, the team, will, you will simply lose the morale of the team right away. So having this positive attitude, having the optimistic attitude, we all have our times of like, oh no, we're not getting there. We all have our times of giving up, but then you come back and say, no, you know, we still have hope, we will do it. Um, yes, we can do that. And uh, you always try to think of the good side of the story. There was a good side of the story and we will take it from there. Uh, having a vision is very important too, thank you. Because um, uh, at all levels of leadership, if you don't have a vision, people will not really see why we are contributing to that. So uh, focusing on development instead of focusing only on um, weaknesses or highlighting people's weaknesses. I can go on forever with this slide. Thank you very much. You can go for hours. So thank you very much for very smart and, and excellent uh, uh, contributions. Let me now go back to if we have agreed on our characteristics and perhaps you can do this at school, you know, what, what type of leader we need our students to be. And once we agree on these characteristics, let's move on then. I'll stop sharing to go back to my slides. And actually, I tried before I saw your uh, excellent contributions. I was just trying to get some sets by some of the people who are working on leadership. And I think now we can uh, make better monographs because the leadership characteristics were much fewer, actually, than the ones you came up with. Uh, but of course, goal setting and goal orientation and vision was um, commonly repeated. Uh, and then how to communicate this vision, right, was also there. Here it's communication, here it's a good communicator or good listener. So how to communicate this vision to others? If you have the vision and others don't share it, what's the use, right? Um, and then networking, how to make the connections, the right connections. Decision making, how to make the right decision in order to reach your goal um, and accountability or being responsible. It's very easy to blame others, very easy. Very easy to say, oh, I did not do that because you know that was the job of this other person or that was the job of, but if you're the leader, you need to learn to, be, to um, uh, take responsibility and we need to learn to have accountability. Um, I think uh, this exercise really is very important. In my university, we have the research center, the central research office, and they have made this exercise and now they announce clearly to everybody that their strategy is a combination of flexibility and accountability. And I want to tell you, they have made a great improvement. And over the last three, four years, after they really reflected on all 
the practices and they started to say what kind of leadership we want for research in our institution and they've come up with yes this is what we lack flexibility with accountability they have made a great improvement the number of research in our institution is going up so high so quickly and also the impact not only research the impact that they're creating in research is so high so yes we need to know what is lacking in our department, our school, or how we want to see our students. And these are the combinations we want to work on. And let's move on and try to get our students there. And sometimes it can do with culture, by the way. Maybe we know in a specific culture that we are teaching in, our students are not very well trained on accountability. Or we know that in our culture, our students are not very good listeners. So maybe this is what I should work on in, in my uh, institution. Okay, so with all this discussion about leadership comes the question, why do we want to teach leadership skills to our students? We have been talking about leadership now, the and, and institutions and schools. Can you just share, please, on Menti, why are why is it that we want to teach leadership skills to students? Why is it that important? Let me go back to Menti. this lovely slide, but then I'll go to the second one. No, I think I have to go to it first. Just a minute, I'm sorry. Okay, I need to present. And here you go. Why do we want to teach leadership skills? Of course, to create great leaders. Thank you. And this is very much needed for the our society, our the world. Thank you very much. Teach responsibility. I was just watching, I teach one of the courses I teach is English for political communication. And there was a comedian, if you heard, um, I can't remember his name now, Carol something. And one of the things he was um, um, actually criticizing <laughs> the world for is that the number of people who admit response, acknowledge responsibility now is, is, is really decreasing. And that everybody says, oh, it doesn't matter, just get on with my life. And he was criticizing this and he was saying, no, we need more people who take responsibility for their actions, please. So yes, I agree to grow more responsible, to take control of the future, I love that. Yes, we don't want our students to be just driven by what others tell them or what their peers. I see a lot of peer pressure, you know, oh, my, all my, all my uh, friends are doing this, I'll do like them. All my friends are joining this department, I'll join like them. All my students are doing, you know, either peer pressure or sometimes parents pressure uh, to empower students, to teach them lifelong learners. Thank you. We are not going to be there for them forever. They have to learn to keep going, to make their own vision, to know what they were, want to go and to dig that on themselves. Um, credibility, proactivity, thank you. To encourage students to have responsibility. Again, I love this one. <laughs> to empower communities by having responsible leaders. To inspire students to be the leaders of their world. Uh, 21st century skills for sure. Uh, Self-dependence. Um, learn how to lead effectively. Motivate students to be self-confident um make the world a better place hopefully um because we are 21st century teach responsibility and accountability very important give confidence effective teamwork i mean how much we need that um uh, help people become good decisions yes decision making is very very hard especially when you have to weigh out so many things like the um uh, the impact of things and where you're heading and people's lives and it's not easy at all um change the common understanding of being in management position thank you yes i don't like that understanding as well um uh, motivate people teach them the art i love this the art of building relationships yes building relationships is definitely at the heart of uh, of um uh, leadership um, to increase their confidence and being able to realize their weaknesses. Thank you. We're human beings. The fact that you're a leader doesn't mean that you are Superman. 
all right, or superwoman. You do have your weaknesses and you have to acknowledge them. And it's within your team and your knowledge of your team and your understanding of your team that you know that some people are better than you at certain things and let them grow and let them develop and let them take, take over these parts, you know? This is for the best of everybody, for the benefit of everybody. Again, thank you so much. I'm really impressed with people's contributions in this uh, event. Um, so let me stop sharing and go back to my screen a bit and um, to my slides a bit. Um, and here we go. Okay, so I went back to again one of the um, uh, writers on leadership, uh, Jessica Robinson, and this is what she said. There are many reasons for which students and teachers should work on leadership skills. Not only do leadership traits give unmatched exposure to students, but they also open up new possibilities for them. And I do believe this. Um, training on soft skills like these open up doors for people that we never realized that we could have taken on. Um, I think um, those schools that teach leadership skills, I don't know, I, I teach in Saudi Arabia and I am Egyptian, so I'm mainly um, con connected with the Arab world. And I would say a little bit in these two countries that at least in Egypt, I would say learn more about Saudi Arabia, that we are not very much of risk takers. And uh, you need this if you're going to be an entrepreneur, and I can see the increase in the number of courses and programs and schools that start to teach entrepreneurship and how to become an entrepreneur. And with that, there are new possibilities that are opening up for people. I always thought they would become employees. And now they are opening their own business and they are running creative projects and in innovative um, uh, projects that they start with. So you really open up new possibilities that people never thought they could take on. With leadership skills come better decision making, analytical skills, the ability to work in team. These skills may not benefit the grades of students in a direct way, because I'm sure some people are sitting here and saying, mm -hmm, what about our students' grades? That's interesting, because uh, I live in a culture where we are very much of a grade-oriented culture. Uh, we think of like what marks have students get, but then I always, you know, look at the graduates and I would say, well, that student was actually a C student. I don't like this expression, but she's the manager of a, of a company now, <laughs> right? And that person may not have really got the A, but excuse me, now she is, you know, a, a consultant to that amazing company, whatever. And it, it, it really helps if we think about it, that grades are not the end of our life, not the end of what we want to achieve. Um, grades is a means that we need uh, to follow, to assess students. Hopefully one day we'll find a better way to assess students, but um, we should not be focusing only on grades and forgetting people's lives because life, and, and their future is what we have in the, in the, at the end, not the A or the B or the C. Uh, uh, okay, so here are some reasons. If we'd like to just share some reasons, um, leadership skills will definitely add immense confidence among students, uh, prepare students, if we're talking about school students for college applications and college students for interviews. Uh, help students to learn teamwork, networking, very important skill now. Um, I mean, I would say people get jobs through networking more than job vacancies and job ads. Uh, value the resumes of students, uh, help students develop better problem solving skills, help them to be better communicators and communication um, is, is, is an essential skill. Give a professional outlook to students, introduce students to new career types, um, they can excel in extracurricular and co-curricular activities and hope, help promote healthy competitions among students. And um, competition is part of our life. We need to accept that we train our students and we need to make them accept that you win today, you may lose something tomorrow, but then, you know, you can get over it and you can do something else and win again. And this is life. Okay, now... We've talked about what is leadership, um, what are the characteristics of a good leader, and why do we want to train our students on leadership. 
And now I think I come to the last part of my talk, which is how can we teach leadership skills? I'll share a few points and then I will let you share uh, your lovely ideas. I can see that you um, have uh, so much to share. So I will just share a few suggestions and then I'll leave it to you. So uh, one important thing that I think is establishing individual goals. Sometimes our students leave, they live and they just go from one day to the other with our goals. I find that this is a very interesting activity. If at the beginning of the semester or at the beginning of the school year, we just ask students to sit and let's write our goals for this year or for this semester. And it will be very helpful if we give them, I think, a graphic organizer where we just um, make them uh, personal goals, uh, maybe school goals, maybe family goals, it depends. And some of them, even maybe in high school, they start taking on internships or work uh, uh, in summer or something, maybe they can work goals. And we try to help them to see how they can measure what they have done. And perhaps we can reflect on that once a month. Um, that would help them uh, learn, you know, a goal, have setting goals and following up on the achievement of goals. Group activities and discussions, class presentations and debates, uh, I think are very important because they help people understand each other, um, understand themselves better, know how to find support for their arguments, know how to give up an idea when it proves not to be the right one, um, know how to understand others, show respect and uh, show understanding also or lucid understanding of others' points of views and where they come from and their perspectives. I think this is a very good opportunity for learning how to manage people. Discussing characteristics of exemplary leaders. I mean, the question I had at the very beginning, who is a leader for you and why? And perhaps this will help people to reflect on different characteristics of a leader. Um, I love the, 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 the ones who were saying, my mom is the leader because she has so many responsibilities and she has so much great impact on people. I love the one who said, my manager is a leader because he really serves others and gives them opportunities to grow. And perhaps these discussions, um, and maybe since we're talking about uh, sometimes content-based instruction, um, just getting texts in class that talk about um, prominent figures in history or in our society that really became, or maybe even have them as guest speakers and they tell their story or YouTube now has so many, you know, uh, uh, stories to share. And then we reflect what are the characteristics, you know, so that leadership becomes more tangible to people, students, and they know what are the things that make a leader a leader. Uh, raising awareness of sight and world problems. Um, Leaders need to have a vision to, to contribute. And it's usually when you are aware of what problems um, people have, what problems your community have, that you can start to take on one of them maybe, or two or three, whatever, and you work on and you make a plan for improvement. So discussing uh, problems and how they can be solved or how they have been solved before, I think is very helpful. Providing opportunities in decision-making, if we just involve our students in, um, I wouldn't say deciding the curriculum, this would be very difficult, but I know some of my uh, colleagues who, for example, give the syllabus to the students at the beginning of the year and make them take decisions in the syllabus, like when are we going to have the exams, um, why are we having scores for certain exams, uh, what type of projects they would like to submit, um, uh, maybe we can have one topic before the other. I mean, involve them in decision making, making decisions about uh, maybe the, the activity that you they will do, uh, what type, type of role they can play in a group activity. All this will be very uh, helpful. Involve them in, 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 I will go down in extracurricular activities and let them make all the choices or all the decisions. Um, if uh, uh, a student, for example, decides to make a guest speaking activity and they choose the guest speaker, they have to argue why that guest speaker is good. They have to take the decisions of where the event will be, who will be invited, how. All these are helping with improving decision making. Positive thinking how to look at things and then look at the positive part of it is extremely important. I think when we are leaders or in our life, 
we face so many problems, we face so many challenges. Focusing on the bad side of the story all the time will never help. It will never improve things and it will never make us feel better even. So um, I think training our students on, so what is the positive side of that? Uh, you know, maybe in this battle, uh, they won, they lost the battle. But then what happened next? How is it that the lessons they learned from this battle helped them to win the following battle? You know, these kinds of discussions help students develop more positive thinking. Praising the act of taking on responsibility. If students pray, I mean, they take on responsibility and they admit this, I think we should praise that. And providing volunteering opportunities. Uh, I don't know about different uh, places, of course, but uh, if your school uh, does not have clear program of volunteering, perhaps this is the time to initiate it. Uh, volunteering opportunities connect students with their society, make them feel they have a, 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 an impact on people's lives. They have a responsibility towards people and they are here to serve. A leader is not here to be the boss and serve. He's here to serve others actually. Um, so I think these are some suggestions that we can do teach uh, leadership skills. I can see um, uh, many comments here. So um, let's see if you can add from your own experience uh, other ways that we can use to teach leadership skills. I'm sure you have excellent ideas. So um, uh, I'll, I'll look at the chat here and I share if anybody would like to share other suggestions. Uh, to boost students' lead, students' leadership skills, I'm looking at the chat. These are just some suggestions. I'm sure that you have uh, many more. Okay. Uh, no, this is not a code, dear. Thank you. This is not a code. Uh, this is just you write in the chat. Career readiness. Thank you. Advocacy program where we um, agree on a certain cause and we decide how we will defend this cause and how we will um, work towards it. This is, this is, of course, a very important way of teaching leadership skills. I agree. Pointing out the best qualities and helping them refine them. Modeling, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Modeling, I mean, you always follow what you see, right? A good example is better than anything. Uh, I cannot keep talking about leadership skills and then the first problem that happens in class, I blame the students. <laughs> it can never work. <laughs> so, I mean, yes, it's very challenging, I have to say. It's very challenging because you always, uh, sometimes you're self-conscious at the beginning, trying to make sure that you're not making the mistakes you're playing with them. I thought that they were all human. And um, perhaps I do that sometimes. And then I say, I reflect and I'm, see, that was not the right thing to do. And a leader would admit that they did something that was not the right thing. And we can change. Um, uh, okay, be a good example, I agree. Fundraising activities for noble uh, 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 reasons or for community service, excellent. Um, actual life, yes, yes, yes. If we really, um, uh, um, follow good leaders, then students are always inspired by good leaders. Rotation of tasks done weekly, very, very good. Yes, um, students would practice things and also they will learn that leadership is not um, something you have forever. It's you do your role, you contribute the best you can, and then you leave it to others to contribute the best they can. And then, you know, this is, uh, and that we all have our own merits. And this is why maybe rotation would help with um, uh, everybody to contribute their best. So this is a very good activity as well. Thank you, community service programs for sure. Engage them more in class discussions and decisions. Yes, yes, yes. Um, discussions make people learn more about themselves and about others uh, than anything else. Uh, volunteering. Uh, for the younger students, we can allow uh, or choose uh, a young teacher every day, also class helpers. Uh, this also is very interesting, a very good uh, suggestion. 
I can go on, mashallah. I mean, I have so many suggestions here. I hope that uh, you're not only recording the session, but you're recording all these uh, excellent ideas. Thank you so much. I just need to um, uh, go to to go on with my the slides. So I have a few minutes for questions at the end. So I just would like to leave you with um, three quotes for leadership and three quotes for teaching leadership. So for leadership, these are three quotes that I like a lot. Uh, if you're a leader, do everything you can to grow yourself and create the right environment for others to grow. I grow and everybody grows with me. I mean, I think this is the spirit. Leadership is the capacity to translate vision into reality. We need to have a vision and then to learn how to get there. Leaders don't create followers. Please, <laughs> please. I mean, I would say that we suffered from that time quite some time. Um, leaders making thinking that they should just have people who would say yes to them. But no, I mean, actually leaders, they create more leaders and they accept people telling them, no, this is not the way to go. And I have another vision. And, you know, leaders create leaders. Leaders don't create followers. And for leadership and education, I would say the rules of the world are changing. It is time for the rules of teaching and teachers work to change with them. Uh, we teach kids, as Mike said, I always keep referring to this. <laughs> we teach kids, we teach human beings, <laughs> right? We don't teach the curriculum. Uh, a teacher a leader thinks beyond the walls of their classroom to what their impact can be on others. Leadership and learning are indispensable to each other. Thank you very much for listening. And I've really enjoyed being with you. Thank you so much. And thank you for all the lovely ideas that you shared with me. Thank you. I'm sorry, I cannot hear you. Is there something with my mic? I think I can hear you now. No. Oh dear. Uh, yeah, right, I can hear you now. There we go. Sorry, there's a loose connection in a wire. <laughs> so, doing so well with all this technology and it's a flipping wire. Oh dear. Um, I just like to say thank you so much for that inspiring talk. Um, for myself, I would like to take away the fact that leaders are there to serve. Uh, and I do think, as you said, I think there's a few leaders around the world that need to be reminded of that at the moment. Um, <laughs> I think they need a little prompting. Anyway, um, just a couple of questions that have cropped up, if I may. Um, there's a few that, so looking at the whole nature and nurture of leadership, shall we say, and how that some people can be born leaders. Do you think that leadership can be taught? Is there a nature versus nurture debate about leadership? Uh, for me, leadership can definitely be taught, and this was the, the, the direction I mean, and this is the direction I come from. I know that some of us have um, certain skills better than others, but I do believe it's, it's a nurture thing. It's how, uh, and this is why, as educators, we have a great responsibility to our students not to make them feel that they are not leaders because they are not born leaders. No, not true, <laughs> okay? We can all learn to be leaders. We can all um, uh, acquire these uh, uh, traits if we're really given the opportunity and the chance to learn and to practice. Right, thank you very much. And the second one, which I think our sort of teachers of young students would probably benefit from, how can leadership skills be applied in schools in a practical way, especially with early learners? Um, I think all the suggestions that were there, like, you know, having discussions in classroom, making a student taking on a leading role in something we taking, helping with attendance, um, making uh, students take on uh, uh, or organize or help organize extracurricular activities or co-curricular activities, um, making debates, right, uh, making them participate in school clubs right yeah. um there are so many skills helping them to when to listen and when to talk very important um how to talk to others with respect and how to reply in a nice way when others have different opinion <laughs> i mean these are very basic things but we are at the heart of uh, acknowledging that you've made a mistake no problem no harm 
okay, we're humans and we understand, and not blaming others as well, because sometimes, as, except if they, um, they're being vicious, otherwise we understand, you know, okay, this supportive environment. I think there are lots to let lots of things to, to share, even at primary school. I used to teach at primary school, and um, and these were at the heart of our the, the practices that we were trying to instill in our students, I would say. Right. Thank you. And, and I do have a personal question, if I may. Who inspired you as a leader? Ah, that's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say a, a number of people. I would say a number of people. I've learned different things from different people. And I think I'm trying to develop. I wouldn't call myself a leader, <laughs> but I'm trying to learn <laughs> step by step. And uh, I do believe that people improve. I do believe people improve. And they, they deserve second and third chances as long as we are improving and you just have to accept that so that you feel good about yourself as well cool. absolutely you are thank inspirational you. dr dita thank you so much thank for you that. for having me really <laughs> and thank you for organizing such a great event thank you well he seems well, to be encouraging an awful lot of uh, in feedback from the students oh uh, got to just literally just popped up if you, i think you squeeze one more in um some students tend to be exposed Stop reading. Uh, stop writing, everybody. <laughs> Chat box keeps moving. Some students tend to be exposed in social media to political leaders who, despite being loved by their supporters, are not really good role models. I think we can think of a few famous examples. Uh, what can we do about this? Very this good is questions. a great learning opportunity. I mean, I know I teach at university, but you can always take it at different levels. Uh, I teach at university. I teach a course called English for Political Communication. Maybe I have a better chance than others. But just having the, the text or the article and then discussing in class as a reading activity and then saying, what characteristics do you like in this person? What characteristics not? And then, so how did this, this action affect people's lives? And then making them think that this action that they are cheering for has harmed so many people. Finding this out yourself will make them after some time change their opinion. And I've seen this happening with my students who were like, you know, when they start discussing, oh, these are the crushes they have, these are the actions they make, what were the impact? Aha, uh -huh, that was not the impact we thought it was. So students can learn to change their opinion and to, to, to have different opinions when they are encouraged, not when they are taught what to do, but when they are educated, how to reflect and how to learn themselves. I think they can reach the right decision and the right, they, they find the truth at the end. <laughs> No, thank you very much indeed. Uh, and it is that, that little aha moment that students have, I think is one of the most gratifying moments for a teacher, yeah. really. It's, it's very satisfying when that little light bulb goes off and clarity yes. comes to them. And it's like, I helped with that. It's a very special <laughs> moment. I agree. <laughs> so, um, Dr. Gabrielle, has anything cropped up in your feed at all? Um, no, no, there is... Um... Oh, there is somebody Ooh. who asked, uh, Jan, did you see that one? Jana Dardia. Hmm. Um, well, they're asking about the relationship between leadership and politics. If so, should students learn politics or be encouraged to study a bit of politics? Hmm. Well, I mean, polit politicians um, are one type of leaders, but there are leaders everywhere, right? Hmm. Uh, we learn from our parents as leaders. We learn from uh, our teachers just leading our class. You know, mm -hmm. I, 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 I don't like that we just limit it to politicians. Mm -hmm. It would be very hard then. <laughs> yeah. I, I love that we expose people to so many leaders in so many different places so that people even recognize um, that uh, people in so many different places can have impact on your life as an individual even more than politicians do and better than politicians do. So I love that we value leaders everywhere around us. Yeah. yeah. So, so I think the idea would be to make everybody into great leaders and then they can go into politics. So hopefully or, or, they can decide those... to, or decide not to. Or decide not to. Well, hopefully if they become great leaders before they go into politics, when they go into politics, they can take that great leadership with them. And uh, maybe we won't, um, hopefully we won't quite have quite so many big crises next time round. Um, so, oh, but what shall I do with the rest who lack this skill? Um, I, I, what, I, what I think is that nobody lacks this skill. 
I believe that these are skills that are there to be uh, nurtured. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps some people were unlucky uh, that they did not have the right training when they were younger. Um, this is our chance and it's never too late, right? It's never too late to help our students grow. Yeah. So even if we start at um, middle school, not primary school or high school, not middle school, we should never stop. This is our, I think this is our uh, responsibility towards our students. Yep, completely agree. Um, thank you very much indeed. Um, thank you once more. Thank it's you. been a, a very inspirational talk. Uh, I've learned quite a bit myself. Mm -hmm. uh, so or on behalf of Notting Hill College, thank you very much indeed. Yes, thank, thank you. So you. Thank you. Thank you.